session, we learned that the behavior of the market is independent of the expectations of the farmers. Now, we will try to understand why there are differences in the aspiration levels of the farmers and the market. Yes, I have observed the same. We will look at how the nature of the motivations, aspirations and behavior of the farmers and the markets differ. Why is it important to know that market behavior is independent of the farmer needs, requirements and aspirations? Why farmers needs to be sensitive to the changing requirements of the market and needs to tune themselves accordingly? Let us do an exercise. We will look at two scenarios. Vinod, put yourself in the shoes of a farmer. I would put myself in the position of a buyer. Now please list down your expectations both as a farmer and buyer. As a farmer, for me, the cost of cultivation, reducing my risk and maximizing the profit are important. I want to sell all of my produce irrespective of its quality. I expect a price which is more than an MSP and I expect cash on the spot. As a buyer, I would like to buy the best quality produce in required quantity and at the lowest possible price. I will make the payment as per trade practices. Now let us pen down the aspirations of both the farmer and the buyer in the table. It could include production quantity, quality, price, market sales, etc. Vinod, can you explain the case? As a farmer, I want to sell whole produce. As a buyer, I want to buy only the required quantity. When it's come to quality, as a farmer, I want my produce to be treated as of uniform quality. As a buyer, I want to make a distinction and buy only the best quality produce. About supply of produce, as a farmer, I want flexibility of choice based on production volumes I can supply. As a buyer, I want regular supply from an assured source in required quantity. With regard to price, as a farmer, I want to sell at a price higher than the cost of cultivation and the price offered by the local APMC. As a buyer, I want to purchase the maximum quantity at the lowest possible price. When it comes to payment, as a farmer, I want cash on the spot. As a buyer, I will make payment as per trade practices. Let us look at the key learnings from this exercise. Farmers find it difficult to sell at a price they expect. Buyers also find it difficult to purchase at a price that farmers are willing to sell. Farmers need to look into aspects of quality, quantity demanded by buyers, prices offered and trade practices of buyers and markets. They need to understand buyers, market demand, market prices, competition, etc. Now, I would want you to go through two different cases. From the case studies, try to look into the farmer expectations on need for cash, production issues and other things. You can further look into the vendor and buyer expectations when it comes to purchasing the agri-produce from the farmer. Please also try to analyze the varied expectations 
of the farmers and buyers. Vinod, please read the first case. The BOD of a FPO of cotton farmers has met in August to discuss and take a decision on the procurement of their members' produce cotton, which will be harvested between September to October. Member farmers have indicated that the produce may be around 4,000 metric ton and individual farmers may sell to FPO depending on the price offered by FPO. They also want the procurement to happen at their doorstep. Farmers need cash payment on the spot. Last year, the MSP was rupees 5,500 per quintal and this year the cost of cultivation was around rupees 2,500 per quintal. Due to unseasonal rains, production is expected to be lesser than normal. So farmers will have similar expectations from their FPO also. How can the FPO deal with this situation? Vinod, what did you understood from this case? Farmers want a better price from the FPO. They want procurement at their doorstep. They also expect cash payment on the spot. Their expectation of better price is also because the production has been less due to erratic weather. In such a situation, a better price may partially mitigate their risk. You are right. So this case shows farmers have their own expectations. They look for better price. They may go out of FPO as they are not obligated to sell their produce to FPO if they get better price from other market players. As FPO is a business enterprise or entity, it shall look at paying remunerative prices for the members' produce so as to retain its members and their loyalty. Now, let us look at another case scenario. CEO of the FPO meets the buyer group and explains their situation. The buyer belong to Lakshmi Cotton's Dharwar. They need cotton immediately. They require cotton with staple length of greater than 32 mm and lower moisture. Ginning unit will not spin properly if moisture is high and more moisture is equal to more weight. They need around 2000 metric ton. It means 200 truck loads. And they are ready to make the payment via bank after 3 days of the receipt of delivery. The current market price in Dharwad is 5000 rupees per quintal. What do you think about this case? Buyers have specific demands on production quantities and time limits. They also want production to be done with certain quality standards. Once this need is met, they are willing to pay but via the bank in three days, which is a minimal time period needed for financial transactions. Yes, you are right. So just like the producer farmer, buyers do have their own expectations. Vinod, so from the above scenarios, what do you infer? It is clear that farmer expectations and market realities do not necessarily match. It is true that farmers have expectations from the market, but farmers also need to understand the market. Farmers cannot ignore aspects such as expectations of buyer on aspects such as quality and price. Ignorance can go against the farmer aspirations. FPOs need to play a moderating role to create a win-win outcome for buyer and member farmers.